All right, guys. Awesome. All right, let me just play the uh, play the soundtrack here just to get this going. All right, all right, all right. So this is our first installment, our first segment, our first try at this live agency dating sort of a podcast where we've invited three of our clients, partnerprograms.io's clients and an agency that we're just getting to know. And what we want to do today is allow our partners the chance to give this agency their 10 minute pitch on their product, but also the partner program, what they like to do with partners. Ben and I are going to deliberate after the pitches. We'll have some time for questions in between, but the name of the game here is to get the listeners and viewers in this case, this is our first video podcast, but the viewers a chance to kind of hear how tech companies pitch their programs, how agencies interpret those pitches to get some level of transparency to the whole game of pitching a new agency, your partnership, as well as your product. Um, so the three tools that we've invited here are all e-commerce enabling tools, Gadsby.ai, micro-influencer and influencer marketing, audioi.com, ADA compliance, and builder.io. Uh, I don't know how to describe you quite yet, Julia, but um, it is a layer on top of- I got you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to do that. So that's going to be one that we'll have to, maybe we save you for last because there may be <laughs> a couple minutes of explanation needed there. Um, but Ben, let's start out with you, man. Give us the introduction to who you are, what your agency does, and I'll show your website here on screen while we're talking. Sure, Absolutely. Great. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to meet everybody. I'm really excited for this. Um, yeah, I've got an, a little bit of an interesting journey. Um, I, I got started in the whole digital marketing e-commerce world eight years ago, having started a business myself on Shopify um, that I was actually fortunate enough to sell three years ago. Um, there was a company called Brooktide Sunglasses that was store number 41,000 or so on the platform. Of course, now there's closing in on 2 million merchants on Shopify. Um, and that ultimately became a springboard for me to uh, start to work with clients and start to help them with uh, the optimization of their website or execution of marketing focused services. It's something that grew and grew and grew over the course of the last eight years. Um, I, I've been doing this on a, on a full-time basis and I am a, a digital marketing and e-commerce consultant. Um, uh, kind of a hybrid model, I'd say, of agency versus independent service provider, because I do have folks that I, I count on as on, on my team. Um, but I, I'm also very involved on the day to day for the clients that I work with across the various services that I offer. Um, and I've been doing this kind of as the, the full time career gig for about two years. Uh, prior to that, I was director of e-commerce and digital marketing at a company called Steiner Sports. Um, and it's been, uh, it's been a lovely ride, um, over the course of the last several years, um, in terms of the, the great folks that I've been able to work with, quite frankly, other service providers, other tools, a lot of partner programs. So it's really good to be here and, and have this conversation. That's awesome, Ben. Yeah. And I honestly, I think we really lucked out to have you on. I think this is a perfect opportunity because you've been on all sides. You had an app, uh, you've been a consultant. Now you're offering agency style services, the services, if uh, you're just listening to this and not able to view, uh, Ben Services, Shopify, theme setup, digital advertising, e-commerce optimization, social media strategy, SEO enhancements, and email marketing. Uh, you're currently partnered with Clavio from what I see on this page, but who are your other formal partners? Yeah, so um, I am a, I've been a Shopify partner since 2014, and I've been a Shopify expert uh, in the experts program since 2017. Uh, in the spring of last year, Shopify Plus finally brought consultants into the fold into their partner program. So I started off as one of 16 uh, global Shopify Plus consulting partners. Uh, Clavio, I am a platinum partner, which is essentially their, their highest tier of recognition. Um, I'm a Facebook marketing partner, and I, I'm happy to hold a number of uh, other partnerships with various industry services. So whether that be reviews related tools or uh, um, uh, 
tools to serve pop-ups on websites or marketing focused services or app developers that, that do custom work or um, uh, theme developers. Uh, I think I've got something like 30 or 35 different partnerships with different folks um, in, uh, in the, you know, kind of in that world. And I'm on mute. Sorry about that. Okay. So um, what I was just showing there was obviously your website, uh, but then I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here. If I was the partner manager from a tool that found you online and wanted to explore partnering with you, right? I'm about to send you an email. I'm about to send you um, a LinkedIn request. I'm about to message you about getting on a call to talk sure. about partnering, right? I found your services. I saw that you're a Clavio partner. You check all the boxes with what services you're offering. Um, mm -hmm. and especially with these three, I think you check all the boxes for all three of these now their jobs, they have to kind of find alignment and find a way and a reason and a, and a discussion to start with you. Right. So I'm looking at, looking at some of the stuff you do, looking at some of the activity. So I have to kind of frame, okay, well, what would I talk to you about and how do I present my solution as a way or at least how do I start the discussion of, of how my solution fits into your stack, fits into your current services. And then I have to dovetail that into uh, talking about the partner track. And instead of just thinking about us as a solution that bolts onto this and works in this way, but how it actually becomes a partnership discussion, right? So um, this is a great time to see how this all works. So um, the first one that I want to start with is AudioI. We have Tony, uh, Partnerships Manager at AudioI, or I'll let you do your own title, um, whatever it is today. Tony, I know you've been doing some different mm -hmm. stuff, but uh, AudioI is ADA compliance. It's a different type of solution than most of the marketing agencies that we work with are even thinking about, but it's becoming more and more necessary. I actually just had a call with a Shopify Plus agency, and one of his clients was actively sued uh, last month for non-compliance. And it was the first time I had heard that. So it's becoming more and more of a thing. So we love working with audio. I have got a great solution and a great partner program, but I'll turn it over to Tony and you can start talking about what it is, how you like to work with partners. I'll enable screen share. If you want to share your screen while you're talking to give any context, it's up to you. Uh, but you have Ben Zier, go ahead and talk about the program. Great, thank you. Um, and uh, just to, you mentioned it earlier, the, it's very stormy here in Atlanta today, so I apologize if that interferes in any way with uh, <laughs> the proceedings here. But uh, I am Tony Simon. I'm the director of partner marketing at AudioEye. Um, I've been in uh, been at AudioEye for a little over a year. Prior to that, um, I helped build out the partner program at Mailchimp. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we're we are digital accessibility, so um, ADA compliance. Um, also compliance um, with um, uh, programs in other countries, so Australia, Canada, UK, they all have their own um, uh, disability and accessibility uh, regulations. Um, and it's all about conforming to the um, web content accessibility guidelines, the WCAG, or you'll hear people pronounce it WCAG, uh, which is a global standard of accessibility guidelines that everybody sort of strives to meet. Um, and it basically at its simplest form means that uh, people with disabilities, people who are using some form of, of assistive technology are able to access all of the all of your digital content and they are able to transact or convert or, or however you want them to act on, on a website. Um, and so, you know, one of the, the big issues here is that, is, as Alex mentioned, um, uh, legal action, um, because if you're, if you're out of compliance with the ADA, you can be hit with a lawsuit there. But then also there are other ancillary benefits of, of making your, your materials accessible. So uh, it's estimated that um, you know, over, over a billion people in the world have some sort of disability. Uh, in, this, in, the, in the United States, it's around 26%. So one in four adults has some sort of, uh, of disability, whether it's cognitive or physical or, uh, or motor disability. Um, and so that is a, that is a huge business opportunity, um, especially in the e-commerce sector. If, if somebody can't access your site, they can't buy your products. They can't actually transact with you. So making your site accessible just really makes good business sense. And then there are other things as well. Like um, when you make a site accessible, you get uh, an organic sort of SEO bump uh, from that, um, which is, you know, you're, we're going through and adding text and descriptions to things um, and, and organizing the DOM in such a way that that's more friendly to um, assistive technology, but then it also becomes more friendly for Google bots as well to, to navigate. And so you, you sites do enjoy a, um, a bit of an SEO lift as well. 
Um, so let me, uh, I will share and start talking about our um, platform. <clears throat> okay, you guys see in our, our website here? Um, yeah. So the way sort of the product starts is we have a site scanner right here on the on the homepage. So I, I entered a site here that I know is not a, a client of audio I if it is a client, um, you'll be directed to a login page so that you know people who are audio like clients that you're not other people can't go in and, and noodle around with their accessibility. Um, this is a site that I, I happen to know had a, a relatively low score and then we can estimate based on our automated technology, um, sort of what uh, how we would be able to improve that score as well. Um, and then down here, uh, there's a very long detailed uh, blog post about how we actually go about calculating the score if you're interested in, um, in finding out more about that. Um, and so this is, this is not a, um, or, or this is a sort of a common model, a site scanner. There are several different companies that do this. Um, if you think of uh, digital accessibility as a sort of continuum, on one end, you have um, the traditional consultative accessibility community. And so those are agencies and consultants uh, that, that work with clients and they, they manually audit their site at the source code level and they, and they give a very long detailed report and then they make accessibility uh, fixes and improvements at the source code level. Um, it is a very effective way to, to, it's probably, it is the most effective way to do uh, accessibility. However, it's, uh, it's expensive, um, it's very hard to scale, it takes a long time. And if the consultant moves on to another engagement and you make a change to your website, you risk breaking or undoing the work that they've done. So that's one end of the continuum. At the other end, um, you have technology only solutions that are they're commonly referred to as overlays, um, which is just a, a single snippet of code that is injected. And, and then their, their marketing pitch is sort of, you know, one and done, you install it, set it and forget it, and you're instantly compliant. Um, and that's been proven uh, uh, convincingly, fairly convincingly, to just not be the case. Technology by itself cannot solve um, accessibility issues. So Audio Eyes is a hybrid solution. We sit right in the middle. We have a very powerful uh, patented accessibility platform that goes through, scans your site for issues, um, and then can make uh, automated uh, remediations uh, beneath the, it's not changing anything in the source code. It's not changing how anything looks. Um, it's just making changes to the DOM uh, that make the site friendlier to people that are using assistive technology. Um, and then if, if somebody were to install um, uh, our software and their score was still low, we have an entire team of accessibility experts that can actually then step in and work directly with the user to manually um, remediate and, and issue fixes to their, to their websites as well. Part of the, um, the WCAG guidelines um, say that you need to have humans actually auditing these sites and making sure that the changes you're making are making them accessible and ensuring that little things like if there's a keyboard trap somewhere that keeps somebody getting from getting to a certain spot on the site that, that somebody using assistive technology can actually locate that and then it's remediated. Um, and so then we also have a usability toolbar, um, which you can see here. Uh, and this is really for um, sort of situational uh, accessibility issues. Um, this is the toolbar is not meant to make a site accessible by itself, but this is somebody who needs to change focus or contrast um, or fonts. Uh, you can you can adjust the font to um, to something that's that's got a different face on it. This this particular font is uh, helpful for people who have dyslexia. Um, it's easy, it's bottom weighted, and so it's easier for them to to process. But again, this is really just a usability sort of situational uh, toolbar here. Um, any questions so far? So. Yeah, actually, a couple of things. I mean, there, there's a number of different uh, accessibility tools that are out there in the marketplace. And how, how does yours compare to, to some of those? Well, like I said, it's the, the tool itself is very powerful um, and it does a lot and, and, and can improve a lot of things automatically. Um, but our solution that really provides a complete solution because we also have humans in the loop um, that are, are manually auditing and testing using assistive, uh, assistive technology on a site. Um, and ensuring that it's actually accessible, not just um, you know firing a code snippet on the site and then um, you know hoping that that things are okay. Um, mm -hmm. you, you will see in in the press um, there are other players in the accessibility space, and they have customers who lose accessibility lawsuits despite having an accessibility solution installed on their website. So one of the other services that that we offer um, uh, is advanced legal support. So if you're if you're a customer of ours and you get hit with a demand letter or an actual lawsuit, um, we can help you navigate that process. Um, and I can get into a little bit of that as well. Um, 
So actually, let me uh, let me hop in then um, and just and talk about. Uh, I guess we can go through the platform and then I'll get into the to the partner program. Um, so if you log into, let me go back to the dashboard. If you log into your um, dashboard, you're an agency. You've got all of your sites here, um, and then what we're going to look at today is actually a um, this WordPress site. It's got a very high accessibility score because it is a um, sort of a, a template that's out of the box, um, and there are some there are certain templates that are uh, that score very high out of the box. Shopify has a theme called Debut, uh, which is a very common theme, and that is out of the box is uh, is very good for accessibility. Now, as soon as you start adding content to it and changing things, you risk uh, risk breaking that. Uh, but here you can come in, you can see your score, um, the number of scans and pages, um, uh, the last scan. And I'm actually going to show a demo of some things that are coming here in a second that are not quite live, but that are very that are very exciting. Um, I mentioned we offer uh, legal support, so this kind of gives you some instructions for if you if you get issued a demand letter um, and how you can respond to to plaintiffs uh, or, or customers. Um, we offer a sustainable uh, testing and remediation plan. So part of um, ADA compliance or, or, the, or the guidelines indicates that you have to you have to have an accessibility plan and you have to show that you're working on it and are, are constantly making uh, progress against what you've outlined in that plan. And this uh, this star report that we issue is part of that. Um, we also provide uh, certification statements. Um, that you know that we we basically we attest that we have scanned the site and um, and have done work on it and it, um, we will list out what we've what we've updated and what remains to be updated. Um, uh, it's important to note here we actually don't white label our platform at all, and the reason for that is when you get into a legal situation, you want to have a third party to rely on so that it's not you know um, the, the the plaintiff's attorney comes to you and they say okay you know. Then your accessibility solution is not good, so you're on the hook for this. By having a third-party uh, certification, you can you, it secures against that. Um, and then, of course, uh, we've got an accessibility statement. This is something that we recommend um, people put on their on their sites with a link in the footer that basically says, you know, this is what we're doing, this is what we're working on, we believe in, um, and then some instructional videos, uh, how to install the JavaScript. Um, you can update your subscription um, to one of our other um, tiers. Our tiers are based on page views. Uh, we scan a site every time somebody visits it. Um, and so individual page views are, you know, their delivery costs associated, associated with that. So that's how we, um, that's how we tier out our, our plans. Uh, we offer monthly pricing and uh, annual pricing as well. Um, so that is sort of the, the dashboard here. Um, something that's coming is actually some tools that will allow uh, agencies to better get in and um, mm -hmm. report at a more detailed level on what their sites are doing. Um, so I can, this is a, um, a mock-up of, uh, of what, um, let me make sure I have. So this is what's coming, Future State. Uh, it'll be probably the next couple of months. Alex, I know that I've been saying things are coming for since we've been working together for the last year, but um, this is actually coming. So this is a new listing here. Um, only a couple of things are active in this mock-up, but um, you'll go here and you'll view a site's dashboard. Um, it's got a lot of the similar, um, the scoring indications here, uh, but now it's showing actual things that we're fixing, um, things that uh, still need to be fixed, um, and then some actual reporting on um, what your how your issues are affecting um, uh, visitors, and then we're we're also uh, working on a builder tool where you can get in and actually build uh, remediations uh, manually uh, in the platform. So this is all uh, this is all coming in the next um, little bit. Um, so that's uh, that's very exciting. Um, so I'll jump from there uh, to the actual partner program. Um, so this is actually our, our partner uh, program overview guide, which I'm happy to share. Uh, but basically, our approach is is, is three prongs, right? So you're solving problems for your clients. Um, obviously, uh, digital accessibility is the right thing to do um, for society. But the reality is, um, as Alex mentioned, you very well could uh, encounter a client who's coming to you with their hair on fire because they got hit with a demand letter, and they're like, "Fix it, fix it, fix it." Um, and so we're helping you. We're helping you actually prevent those issues for your clients, but we're also helping you support your clients. Um, and it's another uh, service that you can that agencies can offer to their clients. You can have um, accessibility essentially as a line item on your on your agency invoice. 
Um, we provide partner level support. So all of our partners get um, a dedicated uh, account manager. Uh, to get back to Alex's initial point, you know, I'm actually over partner marketing, but if, if somebody, if we wanted to pitch your agency, then I would have one of my channel account managers get in touch with you um, and do walk through all of that stuff. Um, and then there are our business incentives. So um, depending on which partnership model you take and we, we offer, uh, you can use a reseller model or a referral model. So reselling is you maintain that billing relationship with your client. You just include accessibility uh, as a line item. You can, you can bill for the hours that you spend working on it. You can resell our technology service for, for at whatever amount uh, makes the most sense. Um, and then we simply support you on the back end. Uh, and then there's also a referral model um, where you're referring business to us. Um, you know, we manage the billing relationship with the client. You, the agency can still say, stay involved at whatever level makes the most sense for them. Um, but the, they're essentially just referring uh, business to us. And it's worth noting that um, you can do both of these models in a single partner contract, uh, depending on what makes the most sense for an individual client. Um, and then there are tiers. So here's our referral uh, tiers um, and uh, the commissions that are, are, are associated with those, depending on um, what tier you're at. Um, and then, uh, these are referral benefits. I won't go through these it's pretty, pretty standard partner program stuff. Um, and then uh, it's a duplicate um, resellers. Um, so you get discounts and, and this is where depending on the number of sites or the revenue, uh, you know, we can actually at the higher two tiers, we can negotiate what discounts look like. Uh, we also do uh, wholesale pricing. If you have um, a large number of sites that you want to, that you want to bring on board um, all at once. Um, and that is, that's, I'll stop there. That's it. That's great. Yeah, this is super helpful. I, I guess one, one quest, question I do have, it's kind of specific, but as far as the process of, you mentioned like if a client comes, has their hair on fire, they got to make a change really fast. What does that process ultimately look like uh, in terms of um, timing for, you know, you mentioned the tool is kind of a hybrid between the, you know, touching the source code, making updates versus just being a totally automated solution. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like from your end for, for you and your team and how you guys operate? So um, obviously one of the keys there is, is hopefully you already have our service installed. Um, we can offer support. Um, and, and this is understandably a, a common situation. People reach out to us uh, interested in the service after they've been hit with the demand letter. And so from a certification standpoint, we can only offer that certification from the point that it's installed afterwards, but we can offer support and help in navigating, uh, navigating that process. So you would reach out to us. What we do um, as quickly as possible within 24 to 36 hours, we respond with that uh, sustainable testing and remediation plan so that you can respond to a plaintiff and say, listen, uh, here, you know, we, we've received your demand letter here's the steps that we are, we have taken, and here's what we plan to take in the next uh, period of time. Um, and then we do some follow-up uh, deeper dive sort of scans and audits of the site and, and do follow-up documentation there as well. Um, so there's, um, it takes uh, for a human to go through and fully audit, uh, audit a site, it can take a couple of weeks, uh, but hopefully issuing that, um, that testing plan up front will, will sort of buy that time through the, through the legal process. Great, thank you. Awesome guys. Uh, perfect. So that was Tony audio. I Ben, you and I can catch up on uh, anything else relevant to that program after this and just kind of what you liked after we see a couple more, of course, but let's do this. I'm going to kick you out, Tony. I'm going to add Brett from Gadsby.ai to the spotlight. Gadsby again, micro influencer and influencer marketing. Uh, Clavio integration is there. It's relevant for e-commerce, of course. Um, what Ben's selling on top of e-commerce, I think this is a super relevant one as well. So I'm eager to hear this. So Brett, I'll turn it over to you and I'll jump out. Cool. Thanks, Alex. Um, and a nice uh, pitch, Tony. That was really cool software. Um, ben, great to meet you. I took a look at you know all the background and Alex gave a quick intro, uh, really impressive. That what was that you said it was like the forty third thousand Shopify site. That's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're um, relatively early on, which is good. Yeah, you were selling sunglasses. It was. Yes. Cool. Um, I wanted to also quickly introduce here. I have Bob Vale on the call as well. He's our director of sales. And uh, go ahead, quick, quick intro, Bob. Oh yeah, hey everyone, great, great to meet you. So Bob and I tend to do our sort of our sales and agency pitches together. He's um, 
he's crushing it. You know, he came from about five years in the industry at, at Privy and HubSpot and joined us earlier this year. So I asked him to join just to chime in and if any uh, questions go his way. Great. So uh, Ben, a little quick question for you on, on your side of things. I saw Clavio uh, Platinum, Shopify Plus partner. Um, you do Facebook marketing as well. Any of your clients you're working with today, have they been asking for influencer marketing services? Have you looked at this at all for them? Yeah, there's a few. It, it depends and it's typically under unique circumstances or scenarios, but there are a few that folks that I'm either working with on the organic side of their social marketing or on the paid side or both of their social marketing, um, where I assist them with, with influencer marketing services for sure. So really like quickly, just I know, cause we are pressed on time. What have you, what have you used today or, or what do you use for those clients that are asking? Uh, it depends. In some cases, it's it's very tactical in terms of just being the scrappy, fine folks that are in their space, reached out to them, build those relationships, which ultimately what I've found in the past is is the most effective way to really to really um, have an impact on influencer marketing, but obviously not the most efficient. So there's been a few different um, tools that, that my team has used as well uh, to help execute on that for clients. Yeah. That makes sense. And what's really cool about our agency partnership program is a lot of agencies like, like yours, you're living in Clavio. Like when your core offerings is email marketing, is that relatively fair to, to say? Yeah. My core three, three offerings are number one, website optimization. And this is not in any particular order, but mm -hmm. website optimization, customer acquisition via paid advertising and retention. So that's where Clavio and text yep. marketing, email marketing would fall. So we, the majority of our clients, we have clients like like Benefit, um, Princess Polly, Fashion Nova, all these bigger like enterprise level clients. They love having Gatsby involved because, and the agencies love working with us because we'll plug an influencer marketing solution directly into Clavio. And the way we do this is by t approaching influencer marketing differently. So our philosophy is much more targeted around the micro and nano influencer. And mm -hmm. when we talk to clients, and agencies, oftentimes they have maybe one person on staff whose job it is, is to spend all week trying to source influencers or playing hand-to-hand -hand combat with all the inbound sort of fluff that comes in and then manage all these relationships, like you mentioned, on spreadsheets, send yep. out free product, check when they post. It's just a mess, right? And, large and that's clients, generally not their full-time job, especially if it's coming from the, the client themselves. Like that's something where a community manager is mm -hmm. doing once in a while. And the CEO says like, I really want you to focus on this. So they do it for two days in a row. And then three yep. weeks later, they wonder where it's at. And it's, it's becomes uh, not good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's amazing. Right. Um, and yep. what's, what we've done is we figured out this partnership approach with Clavio, Shopify, a whole bunch of other players to add this functionality directly into flows. And so I'm just gonna start directly at that conclusion given the time. So the way Gatsby works is we, we connect into the Shopify store, anywhere from a pop-up experience, like uh, with just Juno or Clavio pop-ups, I'm just gonna show you. Um, when we simply ask for Instagram handle, the same way you would ask for email address or phone number, mm -hmm. you ask for handle. So this is like Volcom pop-up, another pop-up on Clavio, so just Juno. Also landing pages, so like Princess Polly, this is their ambassador signup form asking for Instagram handle. This is a landing page. Also post purchase, so once you check out, they can ask for handle here. And the same way that you ask for email, birthday, phone number, you ask for handle. But without a tool like Gatsby, those handles would be relatively worthless. In fact, we have clients like Steve Madden came to us. They already had handles, but they didn't know what to do with them. So they plug Gatsby in and we provide those insights. So every time a handle is collected by a form on the website, Gatsby goes to work and scores it. We'll provide the merchant with the profile photo of that individual, how many followers they have, posts they've done. We'll score the handle as well, looking at things that would make it more likely to be a good influencer um, or less likely to be spam. And we also give the bio as well. And we also now, as I've just recently started doing demographic insights, so predicting their age and gender, which might be relevant for your other services like with advertising. So we get this data and then we send this data into Clavio. And what's great about that is now, as you can guess, is that the data is useful for your team to, 
integrate into your flow offerings. So for example, so here, go through as a custom property that you can then create segments for and, and conditional splits and triggers and, and flows. Nailed it. Yep. And the key here, just to jump right to the conclusion, because you clearly understand kind of you separate people into segments, let's say one to 10,000 followers, they'll get, they'll get, uh, you know, this offer to post about the brand one to, you know, five to 10,000, get this offer, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And you can actually just go on a website and watch actual customer flows and see how they set it up. Um, but what happens then is that's just part one is automating the actual outreach. Part two is closing the loop and providing the incentive when they go and post. So imagine you're one of these consumers, you're buying sunglasses, you're asked if you'll post about it for a free second pair. Five minutes after you post, you get an SMS from Clavio saying, thanks for your post. Here's the code we promised you for your sunglasses, all automatically. And the way we do that is directly in Gatsby, we also pull in the insights of who's going on to post about you. Again, these are customers specifically posting about the brand. And we also show the actual content as well. Oh, this is a different, multiple Instagram accounts you can connect. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, like, here's some recent posts that mention my brand. And we pass this back to Clavio as an event. So you can create flows that are based upon when they mention you one time, three times, et cetera. And that's what I'm showing here. You can see, okay, they mention you, they include this hashtag, what bucket do they fall into and give the reward. So the entire process of influencer marketing, especially on the low end is automated. And then lastly on the demo here is just, if you do capture somebody who has a lot of followers, let's say above 50,000, through Clavio, you can also receive a notification internally. Hey, this customer that you just bought from you, they have 100,000 followers. Maybe your team should reach out to them. So automating that, that approach as well. Any questions at all on the technology and the, and the use case here for your clients? Well, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's a very cool um, use case for how you uh, approach this type of a process. Now that, that mentions piece, I'm assuming that's only going to be if they actually properly type out and tag a handle. Yeah. So it's either a tag in the picture or a uh, mention in the caption, but usually, you know, you start writing it and then it pre-populates it. So. Right. Cool. So this is going really well. We launched all of this with Clavio in October. They've been announcing it to their, um, their newsletter base and it's just been all inbound from Clavio CSMs talking about it, Shopify CSMs uh, and agency partners. We have great relationships with agencies. We'll work with you the way you want. So if you wanna do um, bulk licensing, we can do that. If you wanna just do introductions and we close the deal for you. Um, but we also, when we do sign a new client, we will just clone the flows over. So really the best part here is that your company, your agency, We'll do a lot of the initial work to set them up and doing best practices. And then you guys can go and charge services on top of that to maintain it, running some A-B tests on the messaging, the different offers. It's pretty light touch though, because it's all automated. And then you guys can actually add this additional layer because what we do find is that clients, they're willing to pay for influencer marketing because they know they want it, especially in this world of a duopoly. Essentially you have Google ads and Facebook ads. They need more ways to drive in new, new business and they're willing to pay for this channel. And we, you know, we're a software platform. We're not going to be offering those services in-house. So partnering with you guys is a quick win uh, as well. And what, what's the general cost structure for what you guys offer? So we have three plans. Uh, typically when we get engaged with a client, they will immediately be qualified for at least business. You have month to month annual. The big difference here between going from business plus to enterprise is how many domains you need. So for example, we already offer unlimited tracking of handles on, on plus, but we also include three domains. So like we have brands that are, you know, based in Australia and they'll have an AU domain, a US domain, you know, benefits going live with four domains. Um, so you'll just want to kind of figure out how many domains they need. And also if it's multiple brands. So we have, you know, conglomerates who have sub brands. So then they'll go to enterprise if they have multiple above three. but it's very quick and easy and 10% offer annual. It's very straightforward. So I know we're just about out of time here. I know Alex wanted me to stop around now. Do you have any questions I can answer? Well, that covers all the questions that I have for now. I, I definitely want to take a deeper dive um, to get an understanding of some case studies with how this ultimately has, has worked for, for um, 
you know, different merchants that use the service. But um, it's a very interesting take, one that I haven't seen before. The Clavio integration, I think, is a key piece to that. Because um, ultimately, that's something that I, I think in a lot of cases for a lot of merchants, it gets harder to understand or to connect the dots between um, uh, between different tools and services and the impact that it can have on their business. But if you talk to somebody about um, having an integration with Clavio, mm -hmm. you know, they can understand the flows and, and it's a little bit more digestible, I think. Um, one other question I do have too, just on the benefits of the partner program. Mm -hmm. um, can you clarify how that breaks down? Yeah. So we do, you know, if you want to do like a straight referral, we have a 10% for the first year commission. But really what we find is most agencies just, they care more about the relationship with us and being able to build out this partnership where we'll help their clients, the clients will be stickier. This gives you guys, a, like, as you said, you're in the space, you haven't heard of this yet. And that's partially because we are all word of mouth right now. We're not going big and glitzy on, on marketing. Uh, so it gives you guys something new and fresh to offer your clients and additional revenue to, to manage. So the relationship is kind of how you want to structure. We have agency partnerships with the big agencies out there and we're sort of figuring out which each agency wants at this point. Great. Thank you, Alex, for the time and, and Ben and the, and the questions uh, as well. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you guys, that was awesome. Um, okay, Brett, I'm gonna remove you guys from Spotlight and I'm gonna add Julia here. Julia from builder.io and just to remind everybody the premise here is how you can partner with builder how you can set up and sell new services around the solution and what the solution does so julia i'll let you start go ahead awesome okay well we don't have that much time so i'm going to try to do my best to keep things concise there's so much you can do with builder I'll try and highlight the things that I think will be most relevant for you, Ben, just looking at the services that you offer. But um, basically, Builder is both a headless CMS and a drag and drop page builder. Um, and we're here to solve a problem that we believe a lot of e-commerce merchants face. Uh, it's certainly one that our two co-founders faced at our last company. Um, essentially, when you run an e-commerce business, your storefront is the lifeblood of that business. And you need to keep making updates and changes to that storefront in order to grow and scale. The problem is these updates and changes are slowed down by development workflows. So you have marketing teams, design teams that want to create, test, and optimize, but every little change needs to be added to the backlog. And now you're looking at two-week turnaround times just to make a simple visual change. I think we all know that engineering resources, whether internal or through an agency like yours, are very, very valuable. Therefore, they should be focused on the hardest challenges and the changes that are gonna be the most impactful for your business. And we just don't believe that creating content is one of them. So we have a saying, Builder helps you get content out of code. Meaning non-developers should manage content and everything related, even things like A-B testing and targeting. But for everything more unique or complicated or touching the back end, that's when you call in your agency or in-house devs, of course. So before Builder, when it comes to the Shopify ecosystem, which it looks like that's kind of where you're playing, um, there's really only three options you have. You can use a Shopify theme editor, which I don't think there's anyone that's not gonna agree that it's pretty restrictive and you need a lot of dev trickery to get what you want out of it. You know, um, There's also third-party apps, which obviously includes page builders, which unlock a ton for agencies and merchants. That's like Shogun, et cetera. But you definitely hit a ceiling pretty quickly because there's a lot of rules and restrictions in terms of which pages you can use them on, which themes they integrate with and how scalable things really are. And then of course, everybody's favorite buzzword of 2021, you have the option to go headless. Uh, so let's say you're a merchant and you work with an awesome agency that helps you go headless, creates templates for you. And now you kind of have an opposite problem, but the same problem. Everything is super flexible, super performant, but you lose all of the things that you had out of the box with Shopify. And unless you've got the right tooling, you're majorly relying on developers yet again. And the reason we know that is because at our last company, uh, where our two co-founders met and worked together for a long time, we used Contentful as our CMS. So basically all of our engineers had to become Contentful engineers. So let's say the marketing team wanted a new type of landing page. The engineers had to go into Contentful and build a new template. And then two weeks later, the marketing team's like, oh, we want a second call to action. We want shop men and shop women, right? 
engineer has to go back into the consensual and update that template. It was basically a development product. So you're kind of back to that same issue. But here's how Builder is different. We're all about speed, flexibility, and control. The speed part, simple. If you're building faster, you're learning faster and growing faster. In a recent case study we did with one of our customers, Everlane, who doesn't love Everlane, I love to name drop that one, they shared that since they started using Builder, their product launches are now four times faster and site updates are 32 times faster than before. That's a total game changer. And to speed things up, we encourage everyone to create reusable templates and symbols, no better way to save time. And for agencies, why not use those awesome templates you design across multiple clients? But there's actually a second meaning to the speed that we bring to our customers. And that is that everything we do is super performant. I feel like every time I do this demo, if there's a developer uh, on the line watching, everyone thinks it's too good to be true. They think we're gonna like put something janky on our website and slow things down. But actually it's very, very performant and we're performance obsessed. Uh, we call ourselves the visual development platform, meaning that we're essentially an abstraction on top of code. So basically just an API. We find that a lot of third-party apps, especially the combination of many apps together, really slow down merchant sites. So we try to offer things like analytics and heat maps and targeting out of the box all in a performant way. But that's actually a nice segue to flexibility because I believe all of your clients probably already have apps that they love working with, right? And so while we do offer a lot of things out of the box, we also work really nicely alongside all those apps that your clients already use. In fact, we've actually recently released drag and drop templates for popular apps like Clavio and Recharge, making it performant and easy for our customers to use their favorite tech. Um, we were even talking to Gatsby last week, so hopefully we'll have a template for them too soon. Uh, but what's awesome for agencies is that dev, um, I would say like all agencies, but predominantly ones that do dev work, you can bring in your own code components and register them in template libraries for your customers to use once the build is complete. And that actually leads to our last pillar, which is control. When you finally hand the keys over to your clients after you do, you do some kind of build for them, the absolute last thing you want is for them to mess anything up, right? So you can use the different roles in Builder to establish who has what permissions and what they can actually see in the editor. So you can have folks that only have access to that template library you created and they can not touch styling at all. Or you have people that can only touch styling or you can have admins that can do anything, right? So that's one of the ways to make sure that nothing gets messed up. So the last thing I'll share before we get into our partnership specifics, we have one drag and drop visual editor, but there's actually two products. Our headless CMS, which was our first product, integrates with any tech stack or platform. And so the majority of our first, well, all of our first clients and actually the majority of our clients now, they're all headless. But pretty soon we had a lot of interest from Shopify hosted merchants like Allo Yoga and Chubby's. Um, and so we decided to create a one-click integration Shopify app called Theme Studio. So that you can get up and running in an hour, in less than an hour, it's one click, right? Um, which is really great. But like I said, the editor is exactly the same. So if and when your customers are ready to go headless, um, if they already have content created in our hosted solution, everything will actually migrate right over to our headless CMS without having to rebuild anything. Kind of a game changer. Okay. Um, I'm going to run through a few more things and then I'll let you ask questions. Okay. Cause I bet I'll answer some of them right now. <laughs> um, so the, um, some of our differentiators. Okay. I mentioned a few, but I really want to like hammer the point home first Shopify hosted product integrates directly with the theme. So any changes you make are applied to the theme template instead of one off pages. And so since we're integrated with your Shopify store, you can add Shopify elements like products and you know collections, whatever, to any page, even upselling in the cart or creating awesome shoppable blog content. Then with Builder, you don't actually have to create new pages. You can add editable sections to existing pages. So that's great for A-B testing or creating dynamic content based on say UCM parameters, since you said you do a lot of paid marketing. Um, I think that makes Builder an absolute game changer for performance or CRO agencies. Um, I mentioned templates and um, how you can either create components within Builder and save those as templates, or you can uh, bring your own code and create templates that way. And then you can easily share them between your different client accounts. I, I think that saves so much time for our agency partners, because even if you're, you know, the final product looks a little bit different, if you can work off of one template, 
that, that really saves you a lot of time and open up the opportunity for more projects. Um, and like I said, if your clients are thinking of going headless, we can definitely help with that. We offer tons of starters and integrate with any tech stack or platform. So if there's somebody that wants to use Shopify as their backend, we got you. If they want to use Magenta, we got you. Anything, uh, we're right on board. Um, so as a builder partner, you receive lifetime rev share for any client you bring on board. We're always happy to demo directly to the client. Um, clearly, it's a very complicated product, so I'm not going to make you memorize everything that we do. Uh, you'll get free access to Builder for your dev stores. And last but not least, we offer working sessions with our customer support team um, to ensure your experience with Builder is a successful one. Every new platform comes with a learning curve, uh, whether it's you know, Squarespace or Webflow or anything that's drag and drop Builder. Uh, it's going to take you a couple of weeks to pick up. So we're here to coach and guide you through your first few projects, but we're confident that after that, things will just click. Okay, questions before I go into pricing. Sure, do you, and this kind of relates to pricing too, but is there sure. a solution that you offer to merchants that you know, is less of a self-service type of thing where you're, you're white labeling services or you kind of almost become a, an extension of... The, the folks doing the implementation or is that something that you see typically uh, agency partners that you may work with that are, are upselling on their own services or how do you see that typically structured and what do you guys ultimately offer? Yeah, that's a great question. We love working with agencies and we will not do anything in house. If it's like something super simple that'll take our customer support team like one or two minutes, sure we'll help. But that's why we work with agencies because in my mind, like, you know, your customers best and you know how to offer them, you know, you have kind of full visibility and everything they're doing on in terms of their marketing and all of that. Like, we're just here to help you create better experiences for them. So we do not do any of those services on, on our own. Great. Yeah. I'd love to, to hear a little bit more about the pricing. Yeah, totally. Um, and I should mention, we do a lot of lead sharing in the other direction, because what mm -hmm. usually happens is we have, somebody will find Builder and they're like, oh man, this is amazing. And they start building and then they realize they want to do a lot of really cool stuff, but cool stuff's kind of complicated, right? It, it, it's still, you know, it's easier than learning how to code, but it, it's still not that easy for non-technical people, right? And that's when we, you know, we offer introductions to our agencies. We, um, we do uh, work with a few consultants that are kind of doing the smaller projects you probably wouldn't take on, you know, um, mm -hmm. some Sometimes it's like, okay, I have this, I really want to create this landing page. I have the design, but I just don't want to use Builder. Like we have a few folks sure. we work with that will just be like, hey, do this. And then they'll charge like per hour or whatever it is. Um, so uh, in terms of pricing, like audio, I, our pricing is based on monthly page views, um, meaning page views with Builder content on them. So um, mm -hmm. if you have, you know, a section sitting on top of all of your collection pages, it'll be like all the pages for that. Um, and then also as well as users that are in that account. So um, like I mentioned, we kind of do have the two different products, uh, the Shopify hosted product and the headless product, uh, but the pricing is very similar across both of them per user and per monthly page views. Um, on the Shopify hosted side, um, unfortunately due to limitations with Shopify, all of that is actually going to, um, go through the Shopify app store, right? So we can't have like a direct relationship with you there, but if you did have any headless clients and you wanted to kind of work on that reseller model, we're happy to do that for you on that side. Sure. Um, I was going to, um, you know, I was going to show the uh, platform, but maybe I'll leave you guys wanting more. And if anyone's interested, I'm happy to uh, schedule a demo. Uh, ben, if you want to reconnect, uh, there's a lot of really cool things to see. So um, let me know. Great. Well, I appreciate your time. Yeah. And Ben, we'll get you any information if you are curious after this. But for now, i got to kick uh, the partners out and uh, chat with Ben here real quick and get some notes on what he liked and uh, found interesting about the pitches and the frame and, and what was good and what worked. So thanks again, everyone for doing this. Um, Julia, Tony, Brett, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Take care guys.
All right. So Ben, um, I've been taking notes, man, on things that I liked and found that work in the way that we help our clients uh, pitch agencies. You know, I think um, there's some pros and cons with each one, but anything that stood out, uh, let's talk about some of the pros, anything that you really liked about any of their pitches, product aside, you know. Yeah, well, one thing I think is worth mentioning, and, I, and I'm not going to answer your question directly yet, but I, mm-hmm. I think is important um, and is a little bit different than this scenario, because obviously this is, you know, set up for us to have these conversations. But I think you, you kind of alluded to it at the beginning when you were going through like my website and my LinkedIn and, and asked the question of like looking through information and then uh, someone from a, a, um, a software tool or someone that may want to pitch me or or my business on working with them on a partner relationship um that's a really really important piece and, and so what you alluded to there should not be uh under that um you know it's it's so easy of course to send a you know a mail merge to 100 different agency contacts and hope that you get you know two or three replies um but it just does not work i receive way too many of those to ever respond i mean once in a while somebody catches me and i'm like you know what this looks kind of cool like i know that they just sent this to a thousand other people but i'm going to respond anyway but that's very very rare so that that piece i'm not asking for people to you know i'm not that important at the end of the day right but i'm not asking for people to do a whole lot but even if if it's taking a look at who my clients are taking a look at the services that i offer and you know, making sure that there's something aligned there that actually makes sense, that even in that that email, that one pitch, that one sentence that they can say, hey, I saw you're working with so-and-so on this type of service. Here's how we could, um, you know, help to elevate that or complement that or whatever it might be. That's a super important um, a piece to, to all of that. And then to kind of go back to your question, you know, thinking about the pitches that we just went through, um, and I don't think this is a matter of like the quality of the pitches, but just the tools themselves. I think something like Gatsby for um, the services that I offer, I think that's one right off the bat is going to kind of just integrate into what I do. So from for me as the agency owner and from the perspective of building a partner relationship and upselling services to clients, that's probably the one that I would gravitate to mostly um, and was pretty interesting. And, and I actually do want to um, connect with them after this. Um, but th- those are my initial thoughts. Very cool. Yeah. So um, before reaching out, find alignment, do your research. We preach that all the time. So make sure that you're looking at services pages, looking at current clients, looking at um, some of the ways that you frame services on your site, um, and then try to find alignment with the vertical that you seem to be in, with the services you're offering that vertical. Um, and this is the thing that I think a couple, I think uh, Brett did well. I think he, Brett at Gatsby, uh, did some QA first, talking to you about some of the things you're doing, some of the ways that you present your services, asked some really good questions, which allowed him to frame his next part of the presentation according to what you're doing. Uh, Whereas Tony from Audio, I did a great job at showcasing the need for the product, the demand in in the out there for ADA compliance and for their product. But I don't think he did a good enough job really diving into what you're selling and how you're talking to your clients and then putting audio into that into that um, that conversation. How would you as a Shopify plus Clavio partner talk to your clients? Where would it fit in? I don't think he got that sorted out. Right. Um, Yeah, I would agree. Okay, Uh, And then. Builder.io, I think Julia went through a lot of pain points first. Um, she has a tougher product to describe. So of course. it's kind of a hard thing for her to, uh, to get around with agencies in general. It's like, how do you first get them to understand where the engineers are looking at the product and how the product managers versus the e-com managers versus the marketing agencies are looking at this new type of product. And then she has to back into the partner pitch and the product pitch. And right. um, it's a tough and, and And thinking about, and again, this has nothing to do with the quality of the pitches. All of them did a good job. But, you know, when it comes to tools that are um, supposed to make the process of website updates easier for merchants directly, then it becomes a question, well, where does the partner come into play? So it is, 
you know, in some cases like, like mine, for example, like I, yes, I offer marketing focused services, but I also offer, you know, development. Um, and so is there, um, uh, in terms of my services, is there, you know, a, a complement to what they offer or is it kind of cannibalizing what they offer? And would I, is there less incentive for me to try to then go sell on their behalf as a partner, um, which can, um, just in terms of establishing that partner relationship sometimes be a, a little bit complex for sure. I love that you mentioned that. Yeah. I mentioned that in chat. It's like, okay, well, you're showing me a product that is just going to make my client's jobs way easier, take the need for a third party out of the conversation. Um, but, you know, are you, are you going to be helping my clients with the service side? Where do I fit in? So it's, she's got to do that. I think Julia has got to make sure that she nips that in the bud right off the bat to say, you're still going to be in the mix. This is where you're going to fit in. This is how your clients are going to engage with Builder. And this is the service that you're going to supply on top of Builder. She didn't mention yeah. this, but I think it's super important to know that you can create templates in Builder and then deploy mm -hmm. those across all of your sites. So you can A-B test on one site, get something to work really well, and then templatize that and deploy it to all of your sites at once, which is mm -hmm. awesome. And it can be already connected to Klaviyo and do, do some super cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's what I think, honestly, every one of these pitches didn't do a good enough job in my view. I'm a little bit of a stickler for this, but showing you what services you can sell on top of their solutions, really framing it as mm -hmm. you're selling a Klaviyo implementation. Well, this is the conversation when you add Gatsby to it. You're going to add an additional service uh, revenue of this. It's going to be a retainer. You're going to be optimizing it in this way on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And this is what another agency is doing. I don't think any of the, any of them uh, really explain what other agencies are doing with the product. Yeah. I, and, I, and I think, and this is, this is probably going to be something that's on a case by case basis for a lot of uh, services that are out there. Something I think that's really important when making pitches to, to folks like myself, uh, we're very different than a merchant. So we don't necessarily have to talk too much about the specifics of how things work like like i need to know how things work but the the focus of the conversation shouldn't be solely on the product itself because ultimately like you know i i'll have a good understanding even if i haven't heard of the tool before about what it does like it should be a more of a partnership focused conversation um and then if i you know as the, the potential partner then have questions more specifically about the product itself, which is typically for my end going to be an indicator that I'm interested a little bit more in talking about this partnership. Um, that's probably going to be the most productive versus going through uh, a walkthrough. That's probably more for uh, if they were talking to a merchant themselves. Okay. And I'm going to uh, reframe that a little bit. So I think determining what type of partnership you're going to have earlier in the conversation, whether you're going to be just a referral partner, or you're going to be an implementation partner, or maybe just a co-marketing partner. Maybe they just have a lot of campaigns going and you're an expert and they'd love to bring you in. So determining that earlier on and then sort of framing the pitch and what you're going to do together based on that. Like you may be an yeah, 100 partner of Gatsby. 100%. I mean, yeah. this, this goes back to what I said before about, you know, getting you know, getting the, the email pitch down or the, you know, the LinkedIn message or the, you know, person that's scrappy enough, which you don't have to be that scrappy. It's right on the homepage of my website. But if somebody wants to call me, like call me and you'll, you'll get me. Um, you know, it kind of goes back to that of, you know, let's focus less on the script of a presentation and like just have a real conversation about, um, you know, what it is that, that you're looking for and, and how, and, and learn a little bit about what I do and, um, then see how that might make sense ultimately for clients that I work with. Awesome. Awesome, man. This has been huge. I have one final question. Um, those partners that you don't see as a good fit in the service line, um, mm -hmm. what would you do with those types of tools that, or when would it make sense for you to still continue conversations? If we couldn't really find alignment on the service, like you couldn't really see yourself being an ADA compliance implementation partner, Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But if you can't, what would be interesting where audio is actively selling to Shopify stores? Uh, maybe you guys have client overlap and you do some account mapping routine and you figure that out. There's a lot of client overlap there. 
it, what is interesting there? Is the commission in itself interesting? Could they come back to you with a co-selling relationship or, I don't know, anything at all? Yeah, I think specifically thinking about an ADA compliance solution, me personally and my, my, my team, we don't have, I don't have a specific partnership right now with a solution that's out there. So that one actually still does interest me um, because ultimately that is something that, sh that is applicable to all e-commerce businesses and it should be something that folks are thinking about. And, and typically in terms of how I may work with a client for specifically a service like that, um, it's really been on a case by case basis because I haven't had like a go-to partner. Um, now in those situations though, like regardless of what the tool is, if it's something where there may not be an applicable like upsell of services, then from my end as, as the, the partner, it becomes more a question of, well, how much, how hard do I have to work to get this sold in with my client and what am I getting in return? So, so yeah, commissions are, are definitely, um, in that type of a scenario for sure, like kind of a necessity, um, because, and, and of course, like, I don't think anybody has the expectation that, that someone would, um, you know, sell on their behalf and get nothing. But like typically what I don't go for um, as a service provider, if an agency or, or, or a, a, a service provider comes to me and says, we have this tool and we're going to pay you, you know, 10% of, of this over the course of the first year, and then that's done. But then there's no way for me to sort of upsell services within that. And then I typically just shy away from that because I have to work a whole lot harder to sell that into a client and then to tell the client, well, you know, this isn't really something that, you know, I'm going to be working with you on. And the, you know, the translation to them is, well, you're just getting a commission for this and they're, they're correct. Um, so it's really, and I'm going to jump to another side of it too. There's really a whole nother piece on what is the actual benefit to the client? Uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of really great tools that are out there. And so many of them could potentially, you know, help any, any type of business. Um, and then, then you factor in the costs that are involved and the, the time that's involved in implementation and how that crosses over with what services a, a merchant may already be using. Um, then obviously that's where the conversations get more complex, but especially in situations from my perspective as a partner, like, you know, kind of keeping that context to this conversation um, you know, if, if, if it's relevant to the client, great, but it's really got to have that relevance. If it's a situation where I got to work hard to sell the client on something that they may be unfamiliar with. Um, so that's just something for, for folks out there that are, uh, working with agencies and establishing partner relationships that, that they should definitely think about. Um, you know, maybe I, I may think about it a little bit more than, than other folks that they may talk to or that they may pitch, but, um, but you know, that there's, um, I think a lot of different ways ultimately to win those, those pitches to those, those service provider partnerships, folks like me, um, as long as they're showing value to the client, as long as they're not asking for me to ultimately do too much. And as long as it, it's a tool that ultimately makes sense, if they're, you know, doing their, you know, two minutes of research to understand like what it is that I offer. And that way we can have a real conversation versus just, um, you know, something that feels like more of a, a scripted pitch. I love it, man. Uh, huge feedback. Um, and I was just on a call earlier today with an agency um, in the e-commerce space that rolled out a, an e-commerce, I'm sorry, a partner directory on their website that has affiliate mm -hmm. tracking links in it. So what they do is they literally just send their clients to that page and say, hey, here are the tools that we have worked with, that we understand um, work for our clients that are good. They're vetted, right? And of course, if any of their clients choose to roll with any of those tools, they just get a, uh, a nice little commission bump and they don't have to sell it. They don't have to implement yep. it. They're just there, right? Yep. Um, so I think that's a relevant conversation too. So I got some good notes, man. We got some good video. Uh, I hope this helps the tech partner teams as well as the agencies out there. How should you be thinking about um, these types of uh, conversations, right? All the different ways that you can envision yourself working with that tool. Um, so Ben, yeah, let, let's do this again, man. Let's have some more conversation around partnerships. I hope it goes well. It sounds like Gatsby, uh, Audio Eye, maybe builders could be partners in the future. So we'll keep tabs on that and um, uh, we'll keep you updated. But 
Thank you very much for the time, buddy. I'll let you go. I know we're over. Great. No, I really appreciate the conversation um, and happy to uh, to come back at any time to talk about you know, kind of the other side of it in, in building your business through partner relationships, because there's, there's a whole lot of uh, insight that I'd be happy to share there as well. Yeah, let's do another podcast. Um, we've already got in Clavio, like I mentioned, um, but if you have maybe you and Brett or you and Julia or you and Tony strike up a relationship, what I'd like to do is have you back in a month or so just to kind of recap what's happened, but then also talk about your plans and how you've maybe even um, planned a sort of go to market or if you have something organized and what you guys are going to do together so we can help other agencies understand how that uh, thought process works, how that mentality works, right? That right. could be cool. Very cool, buddy. I'll let you get on with your day, man. It's been a pleasure and um, I'll see you online. Great. All right. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Take care, Ben.